like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Brandon from Shore Fisherman UK. Today we're trying a, a new mark for me this year. I haven't been here yet. It's it's a skeleton arm in Newhaven. It's a spot where I always come to. I always catch lots of different things here. You're almost pretty much guaranteed to catch at this mark. It's a really easy fishing experience. Just straight off the ledge, you can just drop your bait down the side if you wanted to. Pretty much anything can be caught here from smooth hounds to bass, flounders, place, lots of congas here, lots of dogfish, rays, get some undulates on the beach. It's a really, really fantastic mark. You've got to come through New Haven towards the port and then you've just got to go up a little bridge, down a few little dark alleyways and you end up here. Uh, come to the end, go off to the beach, turn right and then there, there it is. You get the ferry going in and out, which is nice to watch. So yeah, guys, hopefully we're not gonna be doing too much talking today. We're gonna to be doing more catching, which would be nice. The last few videos have been pretty difficult. Uh, with COVID, obviously, I've been, I've been locked in on the reef. I decided today, it's not, it's not a very long walk to get to New Haven, so I've just walked it. I haven't got much gear on me. It's a good bit of exercise and hopefully it's all gonna be worth it. I'll let you into a little secret of mine, and that's these little glow sticks. Not little, sorry, big glow sticks. I normally buy the, buy the smaller ones from the tackle shops, and uh, since I've recently found, my, my, my friend ordered some, and we went fishing on Seaford Beach for smooth hounds one day, and um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't stopped using them since. They're, they're super cheap, they're super bright, and it is absolutely impossible not to see a bite on the end of your rod when you've got one of these big bad boys on. Just make sure you put plenty of tape around it, otherwise it's just gonna fall off. But yeah, they last all night, they're cheap, and um, I think they're a great addition to anyone's tackle box. This line that I'm using, guys, it's 30 pound suffix mono, and I haven't had it snap on me once and I've been using it for about four months now. I've got a big old spool of it from the tackle shop it was only about 12 quid. My mate in the tackle shop was like, you won't want that, it's expensive. And I said, how much was it? He went 12 quid. I'm not stingy when it comes to fishing. If something's gonna last me a long time, pfft, it's sold, that's exactly what I'm gonna buy. Especially with like stuff like rods and um, line, reels, bags, tackle boxes. I love, I love having nice gear, it really improves the fishing. Most people don't think it does, but I feel like having the right gear and having everything neat and tidy just makes things so much better, it makes it so much more enjoyable. And you can be proud of it as well. So here we go guys, just a plain uh, two hook flapper from the tackle shop. We're gonna use this, gonna put some small little strips of squid on one and maybe a little uh, sliver of mackerel on the other. Um, we're gonna cast this out a distance into some nice deep water on this lovely sandy beach. I'll catch up with you guys in a minute when I'm putting the bait on. Cut it straight down the center. If I get it in the frame first, cut it straight down the center just like this. Then we can open it up. It's still quite frozen so this is a little bit more difficult it would be than if it was soft. We're just going to open that up, just like that. Take these bits out, just throw them, throw them away. Right. Make sure it's soft when you put it on the hook. And then just cut strips, just like that. Then, there we've got one bait, two, three, four, 
five and that's a bit big so we'll go six uh, yeah six baits there ready to go on a two at flapper which we'll do now let's just make sure you guys can still see me it's going to dry my right hand so here we got a little one o hook a little sliver of squid all we're going to do very simple go through the top pull it through through again through again through again that's one way to bait it up if you want to do that i like to have the hook right at the end of the bait that way if something does take it it's, it's kind of definitely getting hooked see this little bit of shank here make sure even if this is the way you're going to bait it up you always pull a little section of the squid just over that it holds it's going to hold the bait on for you that there for me guys a little bit of a tail hanging off the bait that can just flap around it's going to bring attention it's held on there nice it's not going to just fall off that's it guys that's how i bait a squid onto a small hook Right, we're going to get this casted out now and see if we can catch ourselves a little flatty on it. When you're fishing with small baits, you've got to kind of make a choice. When you get a little tap, you can either leave it for a long time and guarantee yourself a fish, but chances are you're going to get that fish back gut hooked. And that's, no one likes that, it's a pain. It takes ages to get the hooks out. And sometimes you can't even, they don't even live through it. So the other end of the spectrum is as soon as you get the bite, you lift into it and then hopefully you get the fish. I like to be just in the middle of that. Guys, we've got our first fish. Whatever it is, is not putting up much of a fight. Definitely some good weight there, though. That's one of the best things about fishing this beach, you just never know. Until you see it, you never know what it is. I'm starting to feel the fighting a little bit now. I'm just going to caress him up. Oh, there we go. That is the best thing that we can ask for right now. So now if you come a little bit closer, this is what we call in the fishing mode, it's what we call a double shot. We've got two different sizes of whiting here. This one is still an okay size to use as a live bait. That could be a live bait. This one is absolutely perfect size for a live bait. And if you look Here we go guys, just gonna put our first fish bait of the day out, our first piece of mackerel. This is a, a pre-cut section I had left over from the last fishing trip. So it saved me a little bit of time. You've seen, um, it's quite an easy, easy to bait up. Just go, go through the top, put it through once. I don't know if you can see the way I've done it. The way I've done it is I've gone through the top, I've pulled the hook out, I've put the hook in again, out from here, and then in and out from here. And that's um, that'll hold that bait on lovely. Make sure you put plenty around the shank of the hook. That's gonna keep the hook exactly where you want it to be. And then just to finish your bait elastic off, I'll just do a few wraps and then pull tight. Now we 
can wait for a big old fish to come and take that bait. So guys, this is the um, the other part of the, the rig, which is going to be attached straight to your main line. So I've got nothing on this. This is the main line from my reel through the eyes. The well, first thing we're going to put on is a bead. Okay, there's our bead. The second thing we're going to put on is this little weight slider here. Not weight slider, sorry, just a weight clip, just a standard weight clip. With a fisherman's knot. That's that. And then just attach your weight. Now guys, we are just going to be casting just this. There's no rig on this yet. We've made our rig over there, our trace. That's what we're gonna cast. A bead with a swivel straight to a gripper lead. Okay. And then this is the second part of our live bait rig. And what it consists of is something you can tie to your line that you can clip. See, all I've got is a swivel here and a weight clip. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that to my line in a minute and you'll see why. And a six foot of your trace and a six o hook. Okay, so we've got the six o hook, six feet, a 30 pound line, and then your weight clip at the bottom. That's it. It's a little bit bigger than I'd like to use, but he'll do the job. There he is, guys, wraps himself around the line nicely. Just get him untangled quickly. out of him. So here's our, our live bait. It's a pin white in, nice and small. Bass can absolutely smash it to bits. What we're going to do now is we're just going to get a hook and just put it through his nose. You don't want to go past the eyes. You want the hook coming out about here. That's perfect. If you're, if you're squeamish and you're not into this type of thing, then just turn off the video now and go on to something else. Quite a tough piece to go through here, so just put a bit of pressure on it. There we go. Now what we're going to do now, so we've got him on our trace. We're going to clip him on. Try not to drop him. And then we're going to hold the tip of the rod up nice and high, guys, before you let him go. You want him to go all, all the way to the end. Alright? So down he goes. And then just leave the line slack for a bit, he swam down. Lovely. It's exactly what we want. So there you go, guys. There's another little pin whiting on the line. You do get a lot of these in the winter. And, um, the local fishermen actually, well, fishermen all over the UK will find it extremely hard to bypass this fish. You try and keep a bait down on the bottom, maybe for a place, something other than a whiting. It's, uh, it's nearly dead on impossible. So you just got to kind of push through it, keep on going. And just keep hoping that you can pick something up that isn't one of these guys. They're still fun to catch and they're great eating if you can get them the right size. When they're a lot bigger than this, they're called channel whiting. And these are called pin whiting. Pin whiting is a much smaller whiting. Perfect for a live bait for a bass or a conga. But that sort of size, they're not really very good for eating. 
and they were paying in the bum to just keep reeling in. So they just go back. Guys, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the rod stand that I'm using today. I got this one from a local tackle shop, it's about 30 quid. It's a leader icon rod stand. And for the money, I've got not got a single bad thing to say about it. It all folds up. All these top bits, you can take them all off. Or even just turn them around and fold them up. And it's a really strong, sturdy rod stand. My old one was very similar. But um, that was getting a bit worse for days. The, the cups on the bottom weren't cups anymore. They were like, the, the bottoms of like a deodorant can cut and like stuck on. So it was a really... It'd been around for quite a while. I wanted to update it. I got this one. Got it from the Peace Saving Angler, 30 quid. And it's it's done me really well. Still using it now. I I don't fish without it. Even if I'm fishing a pier, I'd, I'd still take it with me. I just like, I like to stick my rods in a rod stand. I feel like having the rod tips up high, you get much better bite detection. My driving license is on the way and I am going to be doing my driving lessons this year. And I'm hoping to be passed by with COVID, hopefully by latest June. And at that point, the channel is going to take a different approach. We're going to be fishing different places all over the UK, places like Cornwall, Scotland, Hailing Island. Uh, we'll fish Portsmouth, Devon. Guys, what I'm going to do quickly is uh, I'm just packing away now because I'm finished for the day. So this live whiting's been out there for about three hours, maybe four hours now. I'm just going to pull you up and show you him. Like they say, the proof is in the pudding. And this whiting will still be alive. And that's your proof that the rig works. Oh, I accidentally just hit him on the fence. But that is a flapping, moving around whiting. So he's been swimming around that whole time with that hook in his head, just waiting for a bass to go and take him. There you go, whatever that is, it's got, it's heavy again. I don't think it's a case of weight. I think there's quite a strong current here today. There you go, a couple more. Oh, well, we've got two whiting on one hook. To understand what's happened here, So he's just bit the line. And this one here is is much more like the size live whiting for a bass bait. It's about ten centimetres in size, maybe a bit more. But that's an ideal live bait for a bass, conger, or maybe a cod. But I've already got one out, so I'm just going to put him back. I don't ever take what I don't need. This little geezer can go home too. He's got a perfect lip hook right on the bottom of his lip there. He's going to push the hook through and out, and then he's ready to go too. I know the last few videos I've put up I haven't really been catching much. Now, overall January is a really hard time for a lot of fishermen in the UK and most of you would, would already know this but we're in the middle of a changeover of, of species and the mackerel and the bass have all just gone. We've got congers and some dogfish and 
plenty of whiting and pouting about if if you just do into a bit of sport fishing but when sort of targeting for a PB the only thing we can really do at the moment is sort of target congas and I haven't really found them to be in yet so fishing is a bit difficult and a lot of people are saying to me that maybe I shouldn't have started my channel yet but I don't want to be unrealistic with you guys and show you every video I upload I'm catching an eight pound bass fishing isn't like that it never has been it's it's hard going it's tough you've got to be into it it's really cold at the moment and my fingers literally feel like they're gonna fall off so it's hard work sometimes it pays off the last few trips for me haven't I've had a few whiting and I've had a few big bites today I've got live whiting out so we're just gonna see what happens with that Overall, I'm just happy to be doing this. I'm happy that finally my my fishing adventures are being recorded, it, even if not for you guys, but for myself as well, so I can look back at things and remember what happened. And if anything, it's a diary as well. So sometimes fishermen, what they do is they when they go out and they fish certain wind conditions, so like a southwesterly in the middle of July, and they catch a big bass on it, they'll mark that down they'll write down where they caught it, what the wind speed was, the date and the weight and the fish it was and it gives them a diary that they can, the next year they can go back on and copy it and if it works then they can just carry on doing it, if not they can move on to other methods so for me uh, the best time for fishing is between sort of June and October I, I get a lot of big bass and I've had some crazy, I had some crazy fights last year, I had a big a big nine pound on a on a Rapala skitter pop surface lure and that thought like I've never felt anything fight before. I just cast out the lure and as soon as the lure hit the water I just got this almighty FUD um, and that was it, the fish was taking line and I eventually landed it. I've got some photos and stuff on my Facebook and some videos of the release because when they're above a certain size I always put them back. And the um the bass swam off and came straight back at me and was just cruising around in the rock pools for a little bit and then eventually swam out so yeah fishing's good doesn't matter if you catch it or you're not it's good to be out it's good to get get, get some fresh air and um i'm just in this weird daydreamy state at the moment where i can't think properly but because i'm so relaxed i'm so relaxed when i'm fishing i kind of just shut down a little bit to be honest it's great I hope you guys are enjoying things. I hope every video has got something in it for everyone and you're all learning a little bit. And if anyone's got any recommendations or thinks I should be doing something differently, don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comments box and leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn notifications on. And that way as soon as I upload something you'll, you'll get a little buzz on your phone. And yeah, just generally guys, enjoy the channel. I've got some stuff coming. I've got some mental thoughts of what I want to do. I'm going to get some hats made up and some nice hoodies. I'm not skinning out on anything. I want to get everything done properly and get the sort of gears that, gear done that you guys are going to want to wear and I'm going to want to wear personally myself, especially when I'm down at, I'm down fishing the reef in Peacehaven in the daytime at high tide. And the amount of people that want to come up and talk to me because they're like, they're like, wow, I didn't know you could fish this place. I was always told you'd lose loads of gear, but when I moved to Peacehaven, it was the only place I could fish because I don't drive and I've got no transport. So I'm just I was down at that reef every day and I've been fishing that reef almost every day for the past like four years now. And I've learned a lot about it and I know all the little marks, what's where and how to catch certain things. So keep watching the channel guys and I'm sure you'll definitely learn a lot from me. Enjoy guys, thank you. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's about three o'clock in the morning now. I'm obviously quite tired, so I'm gonna pack up and go home soon. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel. If you've got anything to say, leave a comment in the comments box and turn notifications on when you do subscribe so that when I upload a video, it comes straight to your phone. Thanks for watching, guys. Forever free